Hey, boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell's Math. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, this video is going to be talking about generating equivalent algebraic expressions. Okay, our essential question, or what I want you to know by the end of the video, is how can you model, okay, how can you create a model and write algebraic expressions? All right, let's say it again. How can you write, or how can you model and write algebraic expressions okay so let's start talking about it first of all what's an algebraic expression well an algebraic expression is an expression when I say expression I'm talking about like a like a math equation okay but so far we haven't we haven't we don't have any equal signs okay we don't have any equal signs it's, that's what an expression is that contains one or more variables okay and you might say oh well, mr. Bell what's a variable well that's the next ver um, definition so we'll talk about it and may also contain operation symbols. Okay, we've been talking about this all year and ever since you got into math, such as addition or subtraction. So a variable is a letter or a symbol used to represent an unknown or unspecified number. Okay, some unknown value. We don't know what it is. The value of a variable may change. Okay, that just means if you have this variable, let's just call it x. In one problem, x is 5. Okay, after, after evaluating it, we figure out that's what x is. But in the next problem, x may be something else. x may be negative 2 or x may be a half. Okay, so that's why it's called a variable because the value changes from expression to expression. All right, and then you have a constant. All right, a constant is a specific number whose value does not change. Okay, that's a number. That's a very specific, 5. 5 is a constant because 5's value does not change. It's always 5. Okay, so algebraic expressions, x is your variable, you know, you can have it just as x, you don't have to have anything else. You can have w plus n, we don't know what w is and we don't know what n is, but they're two different amounts because they're two different variables. Okay, 150 plus y, 150 is a constant, we know what 150 is. We've added something else to it, we don't know what we've added to it. Okay, so that's the y. In algebraic expressions, multiplication and division are usually written without symbols, without the x and the division symbol, okay, because they look too much like number or letters, all right, so now we're using letters, so it says write 3 times x as, or 3 times n rather, as 3 next to an n, okay, when you see a number next to a variable, that means to multiply, or you can write it with this, with this dot in the middle, that also means to multiply, or you can rearrange it, once again, uh, multiplication and addition are, are um, commutative, so you can switch them around. You can write division, 3 divided by n, as 3 over n. That bar in the middle means to divide. Okay, and we have this poster up in the room. There are several different ways to describe expressions with words. So if you're talking about addition, you have words like added to, plus, some, or more than. Subtraction, some of the words may be subtracted from, minus, difference, less than. Multiplication, you have times multiplied by product or groups of. Division may be divided by, divided into, quotient, okay? Or even equal groups. I think that's on our, on our um, poster. So it says write each phrase as an algebraic expression. Change to a pin. It says the sum of 7 and x. So sum means to add. So you would say 7 plus x. All right, it's that simple. 7 plus x. And it says the algebraic expression is 7 plus x. Then you have the quotient of z and 3. So you have the variable z. Now I always put, because my, my letters and, and numbers look too close to, to, the, to each other, I always put a line on my z so I can identify a z from a 2. But z over 3, which means z divided by 3. Okay. So you have to know what those, those words mean. That helps you out tremendously. All right, now this one says write a phrase for each expression. And that just means instead of instead of having the, um, dang it. <coughs> one of y'all gave me a cold. All right, it says write a phrase for each expression. So now we're taking the expression and turning it into words. Okay, so 11x means, I already told you in, in the last slide or the slide before, it says multi it means multiplication. So you can say 11 times x okay here it says the product of 11x okay or 11 and x that means you're multiplying you can say um, x groups of 11 so some unknown number 
of groups for 11. All right, so those are a couple ways you can do it. Let's erase this real quick so we can let's do this instead. All right, whoops. There we go. All right, and then we have the product of, or no, I already guessed that one, 8 uh, less than y, or 8 minus y. So you can say 8 minus, that's probably the easiest one to do, minus y. That looks like minus e. Right? Or you can say, like it has here, y less than 8. Now, it changes the order when you're talking about it like that, though. Okay, Because it's, it's y less than 8, so that means you start with 8, and you take y away from it. Okay, so here it says an algebraic expression, or that algebraic expressions are equivalent. Okay, that means they're equal. If they are equal for all values of the variable. For example, x plus 2 and x plus 1 plus 1 are equivalent. Okay, because first of all, if I got x plus 2 and I have x plus 1 plus 1, okay, my x values are the same, okay, because x is going to be x. And then if I add 2 to it, it's the same as if I add 1 twice to it. Okay, those, so those are equal. I can say x plus 2 equals x plus 1 plus 1. Those two, those two values are the same. Okay, now here's, a, here's another way to represent. This is modeling it using uh, these little bars here. So it says Katrina and Andrew started the day with the same amount of money. Katrina spent $5 on lunch. Andrew spent $3 on lunch and $2 on a snack after school. Do Katrina and Andrew have the same amount of money left? Well, if they started the day with the same amount of money, which is what it says, okay, they start the day with the same amount. Okay, so it says write an algebraic expression to represent the money that Katrina has left. Represent with a model. So here's the model. Here's this little bar model. This whole model represents the money she started with, which was X. This is the money she, she spent. So we're, we're going to be taking this, this 5 away. And this value that's left, we don't know how much it is because we don't know how much she started with, is X minus the 5 that she, she took away. So we can say that this part is gone and then this is what's left x minus 5 <coughs> so then you write your expression and it says the variable represents the amount both uh, Katrina and Andrew have at the beginning of the day and then step 2 write an algebraic expression to represent how much money Andrew has left represent the expression with a model so we got the same thing we got some amount of money and it's represented by x okay then he spends three dollars at lunch, and then he spends two more dollars at a first snack after school. So this much money is gone. That's how much he spent. What he has left is his original amount minus the three minus the two. All right, and that's the expression we have: x minus three minus two. It says compare the models. The models are equivalent. Okay, so the expressions are equivalent. Andrew and Katrina have spent the same amount, or not, they've spent the same amount of money, and they have the same amount of money left. All right? Let's look at this last example real quick. It says, tickets to the water park cost $53 per person. Write an expression to show the cost of tickets for a group of people. Okay, so if you go back to those words that we talked about, group probably means to multiply. Okay? So it says, a group is a clue to multiply. Oh, how about that? Okay, Ooh, that's not what I want to do. Here we go. A group is a clue to multiply. The ticket price is $53. That's a constant. Okay, whether I go, whether you go, it's $53. If both of us go, it's 53 times 2. All right, the number of people who needs tickets is a variable because we don't know how many are going. Okay, I guess you could say if, if, if three of us were going, we'd say 53 plus 53 plus 53. Okay, but really what you're doing is you're multiplying 53 times 3. So it says use X for the number of people, because we don't know. All right, it could be a busload. It could be 110 people. We have no idea. All right, it says the algebraic expression for the total cost of tickets is 53X. Okay, so you would write it 53X. Okay, another way to write it is 53 times X. I mean, that's what this means also. So I don't want to say, when I say 53X, I'm not, I'm not saying... 53 times x. I'm, I'm saying 53 times x. I can just call it 53x because the 53 is right next to the x. All right, let's look at another one real quick. Let's get rid of that and keep going. Okay, so it says Janice has some savings. 
Okay, we don't know how much. After babysitting, she adds $75 to her savings. How much money has Janice saved? Okay, so we got some unknown number in her savings account. Or maybe not in her savings account, maybe in a, in a jar or in her bedroom. All right, and then she's, she's added $75 to that savings account, that unknown number. We don't know. And, we, and here's the thing. Don't try to solve it because you don't know what X is. You can't solve it because we don't know. Okay, add is a clue to use addition. All right, where's my pointer tool? Add is a clue to use addition. The $75 Janice added to her savings is a constant. Okay, that's not going to change. The amount of money Janice has saved before is unknown, so we use a variable. Use Well, it says use Y, but I used X um, to savings before she adds the babysitting money. So the algebraic expression for Janice's total savings is y plus 75 or in my case I wrote x plus 75 you can use almost any variable okay there's some variables variables we don't use uh, s is one o is another because this could be mistaken for a five this could be mistaken mistaken for a zero we don't use i okay it looks like a one in some cases um, if we use an l it's an uppercase l but still we kind of stay away from that one so those are just a couple that we don't use but anyway that's it. That's all you have to do.